If you're like most kids, you probably wondered, why do I need to study all these subjects in school? I'll never use them in real life. If I know food provides energy, why do I need to study the Krebs cycle? And when will I need to tell the difference between nematodes and planohelminthes? I like nematodes on Spongebob. And if I'm not on Jeopardy, will I really need to know the number of signatures on the Declaration of Independence? Or the actual number of years in the Hundred Years' War? Hola, buenos dias. Mi hermano te desador, esta lleno de cucarachas. What? Is it no hablo español or no comprendo all I need to know if I'm not moving to a Spanish-speaking country? There is one subject I believe is relevant, math. Now, I'm not going to turn this into an ad for math and show you all the ways that math is used daily, but think about what you are doing right now. No, not eating, not listening to music, not daydreaming, although all involve math. Okay, maybe not your daydream unless you are thinking about math. I'm referring to what you're doing right now, viewing this video on the internet. First off, the internet is not an imaginary storage space, nor is it a giant computer in one location. It's a network of computers that exist in actual places. Growing from four Hertz computer systems in 1969 to over billions today, the internet would not be possible without math. The math that powers the internet consists of probability, functions, matrices, linear algebra, and graph theory. Computers run on binary. Binary is a system that represents numbers with two digits, zero and one. With just these two numbers, it's possible to form numbers, words, images, videos, sounds, and music. Binary is what allows computers to communicate. The zeros and ones are called bits, and eight bits make a byte, the language of computers. Computers communicate with each other through the internet. Thus, math is the operating system of the internet. Once data is encoded into binary, in order to travel through the internet efficiently, the data needs to be reduced in size. This involves the use of equations that reduce the length of bit sequences. The coded information is checked for accuracy with algorithms that detect errors through the use of division remainders. Now, every piece of equipment hooked up to the internet is given a unique ID number known as its internet protocol address. This number identifies when messages are to be delivered. Although we see IP addresses as numbers and decimals, a computer reads IPs in binary bits, thus allowing 2 to the 32, or about 4.3 billion, possibilities. Let's not forget search engines. When you Google something, math is being performed. Google uses a mathematical process based on vectors and an infinite chain of matrices to generate your search results. The results appear in order of relevance, page popularity, and reputation. A big deal today, security. With the growth of the internet, keeping personal information secure has become a major problem. Internet security uses exponential ciphers and encryption algorithms to prevent infiltration. At the backbone of the internet, there's network theory, the managing of all the traffic. Once connected to the internet, you become part of a network. In just seconds, messages travel around the world, across several networks. Math helps to determine the shortest and quickest way to send packets of information. Then there's Boolean logic, the brains behind a computer, how a computer can appear to think like a human. Boolean logic is like a road map that a computer follows to determine its next move or end result. It's based on data analysis and reasoning. So basically, without math, cyberspace would not exist. No cyberspace, no internet. No internet, no YouTube, no iTunes, no email, no Amazon, no eBay, no Google, no Bing, no Yahoo, no Surfing, no Facebook, no Shooter, no Smartphones, no Web, no Social no Online Gaming, no Wikipedia, no information at your fingertips. I mean, what would be left? So I guess we should thank those early mathematicians. Imagine without them, what would the world be like?